Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome along to episode number 11 of my Minecraft Let's Play. Hope you are all well. And we're back to regular service today with a condensed episode. The last two episodes, 10 and 10.5, were done over a live stream event on YouTube. I thought going to the end and doing bits and pieces kind of warranted a bit of a longer episodes so they spanned just over five hours amongst the two streams and we got quite a lot done we beat the end of dragon we got to an end city finally and we did some other things as well as dying a couple of times it didn't go quite as swimmingly as i would have hoped but what i'm going to do in the start of this episode is just kind of condense and show you um the other things that went on as well as killing the ender dragon in that episode just so in case you didn't want to watch the live stream and go through it you will catch up with what's been going on so let's head on into the end and we can take a look at the first big build credit where credit is due a big shout out to con clan who actually designed this farm for me on the first live stream after we'd uh, unfortunately died at the hands of an enderman and didn't think to use ender pearls. So this was the way for me to get some ender pearls as well as gaining XP because I just died and I needed to get some levels back. So this is an endermite-less design, whereas in the past I had built one following a tutorial which used an endermite. And this one's really quite simple. You can see at the back there, there is the spawning platform there and they will all spawn in on that single platform. And then down below, I can see through some trap doors and what that will do, it will cause all of the Endermen to come running towards me up the sort of staircase. And then they will fall down in between those two trapdoors and into a killing chamber. So, yeah, very nice design. And I'm sure in the future we will look to go to an Enderman design just so that we can actually get some damage on this and not have to kill them all ourselves. But for the time being, this will suffice. Now, if you're wondering why I look a little bit odd with these diamond enchanted boots on, the reason is I actually made a bit of a mistake and I didn't have any armor on me when I actually got to the end city and I found some in a chest and I just put it on without even thinking and these are actually curse of binding. So we are stuck with these boots until we die. However, what we did find in end city was a set of these, our first elytra wings. So with that in mind, I used all of my gunpowder and I crafted up some rockets, but unfortunately I was only able to make about 20 or so rockets and I really don't want to waste these until I have a renewable source of gunpowder. So with that in mind, I hope you kind of guess what today's episode is going to be all about. Yes, that's right. We're going to try and build ourselves a mob farm in particular a creeper farm. Now I have built one of these in the past and it requires a lot of slabs and a lot of trapdoors. However, I don't know if I can make it just a creeper farm or whether I will make it a creeper and spider farm. Despite the fact that the design I followed previously was only meant to be a creeper farm, I still had a lot of spiders spawn there. It was just spiders and creepers, so it's not all bad, but if I could, I would really like to make it a creeper only farm. And I think I have an idea of how to do it and it would involve adding in some columns because I think a spiders need a two wide block to be able to spawn. So by adding in some columns, we can restrict the spawning areas to a one wide block and that should limit it to creepers only. But don't take my word for it. That's only me just thinking off the top of my head. So in addition to the farm, I also want to build a cartographer's table. And we're probably going to do this bit first because I really want to get a map of my base. And the idea behind this map is as my base develops and grows and the area grows in general, I'll be able to see some progression so I can see how it started and how it looks now. And then maybe in about two months time, we can do another set of maps and see the progression. I think it'll be a really cool idea. Hopefully I remember to do it though, of course. And finally, although we've only just moved everything over to our zombie and skeleton farm, I'm actually gonna uproot my enchantment table and set up again. I'm gonna take that out to the end because let's face it, the enderman farm we have now is far more efficient than using the zombie and skeleton farm. And we can level up a lot quicker out in the end than we can at either of those two farms. So it makes a lot of sense to be able to take all of that over to the Enderman farm 
and do all our enchanting and leveling up over there. So there's quite a bit to do in this episode, I think you'll agree. I think we've probably been talking for long enough. So let's get into it and think about how we're going to make this cartographer's table. So it looks like the recipe for this is really, really simple. We just need four planks of any variety and we need a couple of pieces of paper. And that should build us our cartography table. Just like that. Look at that. That is fantastic. Now, I do happen to have an empty map. I'm not really sure where I got this from. But I will take this table over to the village eventually. Let's just put our map in here, though. So I don't really know how to use this, though. Do I need to add regular paper to it? Well, that was a disaster. Okay, I really didn't mean to do that. But if I add paper to this... Ah, okay, so I can scale the map. Okay, so that's made things a little bigger. Oh, okay, so I, this is, okay, okay, okay. So I can scale it and I can unscale it, I think. Oh, it's already scaled to 1 16th. Okay, maybe, maybe I made it too big. I'm so lost to what I'm doing right now. Okay, take two on this. I've just made another empty map. So you have to make the map first. Okay, so let, let's okay, let's let's think about this. We need to with the map, we need to activate the map first. So that is where we are right now. And actually, I think this will probably work. I don't think we need to zoom out at the moment because I think if we zoom out, we end up with something like this, and then the details are lost on what we've actually got here. So I need to make some more compasses and I need to make some more paper. Okay, so the map is in my offhand. Let me walk off the map like this. So it's about here. And then if I put an empty map into this hand, okay, that activated it. Okay, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Okay, so now I have map one and map two. So now I need to walk over in this direction. As you can tell, I'm a complete noob when it comes to maps. If we walk off the map here. Excellent, okay. So now we have three pieces of the puzzle. We need to build another map for over here. Finish this bit off. And then we're probably going to want to do some mapping over near the village as well. So now we need to find somewhere to actually put the map. So why don't we put it like on this wall over here for now. This will allow us to... Yeah, this could work. This, this could work. So... Let me get all my maps. And then this is a bit of a jigsaw. So this one's gonna go there. That one will go there. This one, oh, it goes over here, doesn't it? Like so. Okay, excellent. There's a way to lock the maps, isn't there? Well, I need to create some more compasses and we need five more maps so that we can actually finish this off. And then I might look at how we lock these because I don't want them to change but I'm going to put a sign here and put day's date which is November 7th 2020 which is today's date for me uh, all right so let me go and make some more maps and then I can fill in the blanks with this all right so there is our completed map as it stands at the moment now I've done a bit of research and I believe I can lock it like so using glass panes. So I'm just going to go and run through all of these real quickly. There we go. There is our completed map as it stands today on November the 7th. And uh, we're going to fill this hallway hopefully with um, progress updates. And I'll be really interested to see how this sort of core area evolves through our Let's Play. All right, guys, we are over at the end. And as you can see, I have moved my enchanting setup over here and we're all ready to go and, and get some new enchants. I need to bring an anvil over because if we get any books that we want to do, 
I can't do it from over here, so I'd probably be best to have a stack of iron and stuff and the anvil over here so I can do it. But I just want to kind of show you how this all works. And I will say now I have turned my sound off because the sound that these Endermen make when they are aggroed is just absolutely horrendous and nobody really needs to hear that at all. But what we do is we come and stand over here and then we look like that and then we can actually see them like this. And then they literally all come charging in here and we just stand here and we whack a wave for lack of a better term. Yeah, this is where we're going to be doing all our leveling up, all our enchanting going forwards and getting ourselves in a good position should we die again, which let's face it, it's probably going to happen at some point because accidents happen. I'm clumsy. I don't really, not really a professional Minecraft player. I'll be completely honest. And um, yeah, I tend to make lots of mistakes. So the maps are done and we've moved our enchanting setup over to the end. And I guess that means we need to stop procrastinating and we need to actually concentrate on our main objective for this episode. And that is to build our creeper farm. Now the farm itself, ideally I want to put over some water and the area I think that would work best for this will be over where we dug the sand originally when we got all the sand for our glass and glass bottles. I seem to remember that there was an ocean right in front of where we dug all the sand. So I think we're going to head over there, scope out the area, swim out a little bit and see if we can build a platform in the sea because that will definitely improve our mob spawn rates. And in my previous world, yes, we're going there again. I did build my farm in an ocean and it was relatively speedy. So let's head on out of here back into the nether and we will go and scope out that area and see if it's any good for building our mob farm out at sea. Okay, so here we are on the beach and as you can see, we have got a nice ocean area here. So this is gonna be the perfect place for us to build our mob farm out at sea. Not sure how far it goes out, but there's definitely a long way there. Have I got a boat in my chest? I do not. So I can't actually see how far it goes. Just to try and get an idea of how far this goes out, I have set my render distance to 48 chunks. Okay, so we've got some land there. That looks like it could be the only land in the vicinity so if we go out i would say possibly about 130 blocks or so then we should be okay i say 130 blocks because that's the amount of blocks i went out when i was building my end farm so let me go back to base let me gather up some resources and then i guess we can start to build our mob slash creeper farm so i am 135 blocks away from my portal and weirdly enough i think i'm actually nearer to that landmass there but what we're gonna run with this anyway we're, we're far enough away from any land i think so i have started to build up my platform i have laid down the tracks here of where the minecart will run to pick up everything in this system and drop it into those two chests right there and where I'm stood now, this will actually be made up of magma blocks, which I have got here. I'm not going to place them down until we are ready for them. But because we are building this in an ocean and I've already found my center point, I've kind of got to build a little bit backwards, which is not ideal, but I can make it work. So the base design of this farm is Shulker Crafts Creeper Farm. I will link it down in the description below. And yeah, basically I need to build out a big stone platform first, then I can build up the outer bit, then I can add in the water, then the lava, then the gates and things. So this is just phase one and this could take a little bit of time. So I think the majority of this build is gonna be done over the course of a time-lapse. So 
Let us jump into that right now and build up phase one of this creeper farm. Alright guys, so we have got the shell and hopefully my calculations will be correct for this. But now all we need to do is go around and place in water on each and every one of these blocks here. Now hopefully, if my calculations are right, the water should just flow down towards the middle. Though looking at this... I may have built this one block too short. But essentially what we're going to be doing here is putting a water source on each one of these blocks here. And that will force anything that spawns in and around these areas to fall down effectively into here. The water will continue to push them over in this direction. And where I've outlined that sort of raised area in the middle, that's where all my magma blocks will be sitting, which will eventually kill the mobs and all of the drops will fall into the middle area. And then fingers crossed, we can move on to stage two of the build, which will be building the individual levels and the redstone line that will actually trigger water and that in turn pushes off the mobs down into this area so let me go around and finish this off tidy everything up get some magma blocks down some fence posts and then i'll gather some resources ready for building the second part also something i didn't say in the previous clip but when it was dark i noticed sea lanterns over there and you can probably see there's a sea temple over there and there's some guardians. Now hopefully that won't impact my spawn rates too much but definitely something we need to be aware of and keep an eye on. I've never been out to a sea temple before, so definitely it's good to know that there is one there because I'm sure we will be raiding one at some point. Anyway, let me get finished up here and then I will be back once I've gathered some more resources.
So I said I was going to get some resources and then in the next clip, everything's built. <laughs> yes, I don't know. I just got kind of carried away. Also, there's my there's that guardian farm I was talking about. And um, I just got kind of carried away building things and I just put it up. I just cracked on and did things and everything is all done. And we can fly off the top of our AFK platform there. I didn't show me building that, but here is the rest of it from the aerial point of view. I tried a few things um, since building it to sort of reduce or get rid of the spider spawning. Uh, and at the moment, nothing is working. But I've been up there for about half an hour, 45 minutes possibly. And that is what we have so far. As you can see, you get quite a bit of gunpowder from this farm. So... It is definitely a great investment. Let me just take some of this and I'm going to craft up some rockets. Unfortunately, uh, actually I can. Uh, I didn't think I could make the rockets, the, the three rockets in this way. Well, let's get a full stack of this gunpowder instead and make some flight duration three rockets. And now we ain't never going to have to walk anymore. Fantastic. This is... This is just great now because this means we can head on back to the end and we can go and do some end busting and get some shulkers. And we don't have to worry about walking there. But here it is just sort of like from the, the angles and stuff. I honestly thought getting the logs and the wood for the trapdoors would be a nightmare. But it actually wasn't. I've got that many birch trees outside of my base that it was really, really easy to be able to get all of the resources I need. It probably took me about 20 minutes of chopping down the trees and laying the saplings and regrowing them and stuff. So yeah, it really wasn't a bad thing at all. But let me just show you up here is our AFK platform all the way high up into the sky. It's a little bit awkward to get to at the moment, but I will be putting in a nether portal up here and expanding it. I've also got plans to be actually piping up all my drops up to the top here somehow if i can work that out maybe in between episodes and then have the storage system up here but once i get the never portal up here then it's fine we don't need to worry about going down to the bottom once that's all done and the, the items are coming up here but this is just a real simple afk platform here for me just so i don't get killed by phantoms and stuff but yes there it is we are done we don't have to worry about anything else so i think there's a must be an elder guardian there it looks like an elder guardian's tail is sticking out there I'm really excited to be sort of dropping into there and um checking out that place once we've got some bits and pieces and actually need to understand better how we can um what you actually do at a sea temple because I've, actually, I've never been to one before but there we go guys we have got everything we wanted doing done we now have a creeper farm i know it's not quite a creeper farm because of other bits and pieces but it's working for now i'm sure the string will come in handy whether or not i change it up or i find a way to do it is another thing but if you guys have got any ideas of how i can better how i can make it more efficient uh do let me know like i said i don't think it's a bit of a problem though because if we take the storage system up to the top like i want to then we're going to have loads of space for storage. We can just expand that top area and everything will be honky dory indeed. But uh, that's pretty much going to bring us to the end of this episode, I think, guys. I don't really think I've got anything else to show you at this minute, this moment in time. So, yeah, I'm just going to fly around a bit here and enjoy having some fireworks. And in the next episode... I will try and find some more things to do. What I might do before the next episode comes out on YouTube, though, is I may do a uh, another live stream now that we've got the firework rockets and everything. And I may just try and get some shulker boxes. So we may do some N-City raiding on a live stream. I don't think we need to do N-City raiding in a video. So uh, keep an eye on your sub boxes and you may see a live stream popping up. Uh, once we've got shulker boxes, we are really laughing. But guys, thank you very much as always for your continued support. I appreciate it. And until the next episode, goodbye.